Welcome to another episode of the Up and In Show. Thank you, Kylie. Thank you, Callie, for setting us up again. Um, but I am here with two awesome guests. Um, you guys brought your bling. You brought your uh, medals. Yeah. But Kalia <laughs> and Nizzy, thank you guys for joining me. You guys are juniors on the LSU Tiger Girls, right? Yes. And you guys just won a national championship. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> Congratulations. Why don't you guys introduce us a little bit? Let us know where you guys are from, you know, and your year in school, all that good stuff. Cool. You go. Start us off. <laughs> um, I'm Kalia. I am from Egan, Minnesota. So Minnesota? Yeah. Yes. Hey. Damn. Where are you? Are you from Louisiana? No, I'm from California. How'd yeah, you guys? So you guys came down here for dance, all that stuff? Yes. Yeah. Let's go. Do they recruit you? Is it kind of similar to all the other sports at LSU? It's yeah. turning into that it's a lot more. It's turning into recruitment now. Um, when we came, they weren't recruiting, so we just auditioned on our own, but now they're starting the recruitment with our team. That's pretty cool. So how does that work for, like, young girls that are dancing? How do they get scouted or recruited, or, like, how mm -hmm. do people see them like that? Yeah, it's a lot different than, like, a normal or, like, a basketball or right. football mm -hmm. type of thing because for that it's, like, numbers and stats and yeah, you yeah. see all those things. So you kind of have to put yourself out there and – Within the dance team collegiate community, mm -hmm. you kind of know those those girls that are you're trying to get and trying to recruit on that team. So um, you'd mostly try to reach out to college coaches, and mm -hmm. since it's not like a tryout process anymore, you're trying to send in as much film, trying to meet gotcha. them as much as possible. And we did have a couple like girls that want to be recruited for next year come down right. for games, and so it's it's very interesting. We're kind of new to it too. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 we're pretty new to it. We had like recruitment weekends and all of that stuff too. So they came and watched us perform in football and then basketball. And um, so, yeah, I think we also, like our choreographers, they have like a Tribe 99 combine. So they hold like a little thing where all the coaches come out and they get to see, you know, new faces and new talent. So that's pretty cool. But mm -hmm. we, um, yeah, again, we auditioned. So. That's pretty dope. Uh, my business partner, actually, his daughter is um, trying to go into like an art school or performing school. Right, right, right. So I'd imagine it's probably pretty similar. And it's like with COVID and everything, she can't do in-person auditions. Yeah. So she's literally like filming stuff at their house and yep. doing stuff like during the holidays and everything. Right. It's yeah. wild. Right. So that's kind of yeah. what you guys had to do. But yeah. like in person, you had to go travel and go do these auditions. So right. you guys came down here and went on stage and then they kind of like Mm -hmm. Did all that stuff? Yeah, it's really yeah. crazy. That is. That, is that yeah. kind of like put a lot of pressure on you guys as young girls, kind of like to perform and do that stuff? Yeah. I mean, during COVID, like when it was, when it just started, it was really hard because a lot of our practices were on Zoom. Oh so um, we were like, you know, staying in contact on Zoom. We weren't able to really go in our facility for a little bit. So that was pretty hard. Um, but now that it's kind of a little bit dying down, like yeah. practices have been easier. And since we were able to go to nationals this year, um, our practices were in person, which was really good. And I know other teams like had a, a kind of a downfall with that. They weren't able to really practice in person. So, um, which you know, we feel really bad for, but we're yeah. just grateful and blessed that we were able to have practices in person. So, nice. yeah, yes. Yeah, especially kind of, we talk about this sometimes, but as like a high school girl, you're trying to make that next move right. into yeah. professional dance, dance, collegiate dance. So it, it is a lot of pressure because a lot of the times, especially when we tried out, it was like a one and done. Mm -hmm. So when we were going down to LSU, it was like, okay, we're going down to the state. We, we may right. make it, we may not. Right. And it's that pressure of like, performing for three days hoping you make it to the next day so yeah, yeah it's very cutthroat yeah mm -hmm. very cutthroat yeah. that's intense damn well you guys learn at an early age about competition real quick that's yes. wild mm -hmm. um yes. but we'll, we'll get into a lot of the details about 2021 and 2022 but let's talk about some some good stuff you guys said that you guys got to practice in person <laughs> this year and just won a national championship yes. right yes. so talk to me how does that work do you guys go where's your guys national championship do you guys travel as a team i'm a little new to the mm -hmm dance competition mm -hmm. cheer side of things you know because with baseball it was just kind of <laughs> cookie cutter they did that right. it, was, right. it was straight up every year so just tell me a little bit about how you guys do it in your guys competition yeah so it's a company called UDA um and it, it's UDA and UCA so UCA is with cheer UDA okay. is with dance nice. um and it's down at the ESPN like worldwide of sports in Florida nice. okay. yeah so that's what I thought I wasn't yeah. sure though yeah, yeah we traveled down there um as a team and it kind of depends each year we bring two dances we our school in particular does hip-hop and jazz so we were getting ready for both of those this year um and then there's normally like 16 to 18 girls on the floor and okay. then some alternates that switch in and out so gotcha. yeah those that's like 
pretty much the basis. I don't know what yeah. else I'm forgetting. But um, yeah, so like with college dance, it's a little bit different than like competitive dancing. Okay. So we've been competing since we were like three years old. Right. And like competing, that's just where um, it's more like leeway. You get to do your own thing. Choreographers mm-hmm. just give you, um, you know, a dance and you perform in the way that they want you to. But with college, it's a little more stricter and you have to literally look the same. So when we do do our hip hop dance, I know we got like a lot of compliments with just like how we look the same and how it was so like sharp and everything. And it, it literally is it's so intense. Our practices are intense, specifically LSU, just because like our coach, she wants a lot out of us and you know mm-hmm. we definitely want to meet that level and that expectation and we had so much like just weighing on our shoulders and we really wanted to make sure we looked perfect and you know give a good outcome um, on the floor so I think we looked so like clean and everything just because of how much we practiced so with like competing and competitive dancing it's a little different you don't have to compete I mean dance or practice that much the way we do for college so mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty intense, and yes, it did look good. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I think we watched the video how many times? We watched it probably like four or five times in here today, and then oh. they were all saying how much they watch it, and you guys are going like, right? Like, shit's blowing up on TikTok, yeah. right? Like, it's So wild. what is it, like parts of your guys' dance or something? Like a certain move or whatever? Um, yeah, yeah kind of like, like formulated their own <laughs> little challenges. They made their That's own dope. challenge. Yeah, yeah, they like the um, can't be getting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they like that part. So we and w- that was our favorite part too. Mm-hmm. But there's so many parts we loved about that dance. Honestly, like our choreographers, they came in and told us that we were gonna be doing some crazy things. You know, like hip thrusting. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We were nervous about it, but at the same time, we loved it and we just wanted to give them a show. So yeah, well, you definitely did. And if you guys don't mind, I would love to like dive in when you say you were a little nervous about it. Is it more just because of what it stands for, the the power, you know, and, and the song and all the things that were going into it that, that you're saying is, you know, you're nervous about? Or is it just that it was a new move and you guys hadn't done that before? It was mostly, I think, to do with the route we were taking. So traditionally, LSU Tiger Girls, which I think it's always been the same, but it's always been like these athletic girls going out there and just giving it their all. Like it's in your face type of thing. Gotcha. So. That was kind of the tradition that everyone got loved and loved about LSU. That's why they came and watched because they did all these tricks and they had a thousand things going at, um, all the time. So then when you're coming into this year, not competing last year um, and knowing everyone's watching you, mm-hmm. you want to you wanna create something that's different so people are still intrigued. So I think we were just nervous because of the song choice. Yeah. Um, it has so much meaning to it in like the best way possible. Yeah. Um, and then also just like the tempo, it's very like it was a slower dance. It was minimalistic at times as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's not that's not like familiar to that competition in particular, especially in college. Yeah. So I think we were just nervous about the reaction. And after semis, we we knew it was gonna. Yeah, <laughs> we were knew, good yeah. because <laughs> of how everyone reacted. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it was just kind of it's just new bringing that into. We kind of probably did that more in high school, that type of dancing. But then at a college level, people don't usually do that. So we're trying to bring some new things in. Innovate a little bit. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Well, let's give a little context to our listeners in case they don't know the backstory. So 2021, obviously, you know, people are still dealing with COVID. But Mm -hmm. your guys' season or nationals, right, was Mm -hmm. taken away. You guys probably trained leading up to that. You guys Mm -hmm. probably had a routine and all these different things. So talk to me a little bit about what that one, that experience was like and then kind of fill everybody in of why it was so meaningful that next year, the song, all of that stuff, if you guys can. This is the this is what I think is going to be the cool part of the episode for everybody to understand. Yeah. Um, I, I really think when we did find out that we weren't able to go, we were really shocked at first because we literally thought that we were, we were going <laughs> to national. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we didn't know, like, how much LSU was affected with COVID because right. at the time – all of the other teams were going to their things. You know, football had just went to their games. And then um, and then at that point, track was starting. They were doing mm-hmm. their things. So yep. we were in the, you know, we thought we were going. Right. So when we found out, we were shocked. We were pretty hurt. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of us did go through a lot of things at that time. You know, different team members, you know, they took it on a different way as like me and Kalia did or, you know, whoever. So we were definitely hurt. Um, we did do like a petition type of thing to, you know, just – get some outlook on it and see if people could just try and get it out there for us. Um, Your routine and stuff like that? You're saying that the one that you guys were supposed to perform at nationals? So we didn't have a routine yet when we had found out. So we just had a petition out just to um, try and get us to go to nationals so that we could start a routine. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but it didn't make it to where we thought it would. So that was fine. We ended up doing something else that year. Um, we still wanted to dance. Like it's something that we love. So we're not just going to stop just because of what happened. Right. So, um, and, and sorry to interrupt yeah, you, but so 2021 nationals went on. You guys just weren't yeah. going because of COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. that was the, the issue, right? Yes. Got you. Okay. Yeah. So we didn't go, um, so this year, now that we were able to go, we, again, it was just, we wanted to prove that, like, since we had that downtime, like, nothing changed. We are mm -hmm. still working hard. And I think that's, like, the thing about our team. Like, even when we we had so many setbacks and so many yeah. things, like, you know, come our way, and we still came up on top, still, you know, grinding. And I think that's what I love about our team, that we don't ever let anything, something like that affect yeah, us. Yeah. And it's so big and so easy to want it to, you know, affect your team and make your team. So... Yeah, yeah, and I think it was a lot bigger than just not going that year. Mm -hmm. um, just talking to, like, administrators and things like that, it had more to do with, like, what are we on this campus? Mm -hmm. What, what mm -hmm. do we represent? Um, and a lot of it coming back to, like, being black women as well. Mm -hmm. Like, this is so, such a monumental point for us as women in our right. ca careers. And then also girls looking up to us um, on campus and just things in general. So for me, it was a lot about like our role on this school because we were from when COVID was happening, we were still training. Nothing had changed in the mm -hmm. training aspect. We were still, like she said, we were performing at football games, basketball games. It might've looked different, but we were still there doing right. our job. Right. So for me, it was just, it was a little disheartening knowing we could still do our job on campus, but then, the time for our big right. game or our yeah. whatever it wasn't um it wasn't valued i yeah. guess and you guys didn't get the justice that you guys deserve not i guess maybe justice but the the limelight right the yeah. exposure the platform right. and and to what you're speaking about and something that i'm super passionate about and something i you know i have personal beliefs about but i think people just like you said young girls young black girls need to see people of you guys your stature the school that you're at Mm -hmm. on your biggest platform they just yeah. need to know that it's a possibility that they can do it, and that's what you guys stand for and represent mm -hmm. and so that's what I felt like you know hearing the story is what was taken away and that's why mm -hmm. I think like this year was so amazing for you guys and it was like now now you guys got your platform that's why things are yes. happening on TikTok and things are really getting out there because like the universe doesn't lie right like like right. this stuff is going to come around and sometimes you got to go through the hardest shit to get out mm -hmm. on the other side and really mm -hmm. appreciate it, right? So Absolutely. in 2021, yes. you guys were all hurting, mm -hmm. all of that. You probably couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. Can't imagine what it was like for seniors and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like that right. was like yeah. the end of their year, right? Just, yeah. Yes. So, yes. man, but I, I appreciate what you guys are doing. And, and now this is the fun part, right? So you guys yeah. get to celebrate <laughs> and use your platform. So what are some of the things that you guys are doing now that you guys have won? Obviously, you guys are rocking these medals yes. and everything. But <laughs> so what's some of the stuff you guys are doing around the community? Are you guys doing any fun stuff like that in the, na in the light of the national championship? Um, we, we always usually do like community work. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's like kind of a part of Tiger Girls. So hopefully we do like have some more coming up. That'll be great. Um, we are doing like a lot of podcasts, like what yeah. we're doing right now. So <laughs> yeah, fun. so a lot of us, we're kind of like splitting it up with yeah. the team. Like whoever is reaching out to us, we're doing it. We just, you know, like ask our coach first or, you know, yeah, whoever. Yeah, but yes, we're just doing a lot of interviews. A lot of like articles have done things on us. Um, I know like People's Magazine just like posted us. So yeah. that was really cool. It was. Um, it's just a lot going on. It's so overwhelming. But we're just so grateful that it's not even, you know, that that matters to us. It's just really, you know, like being that role model, mm -hmm. making sure, you know, the little girls and whoever, you know, really looks up to us just knows that you can do it. Anyone can do it. You know, it's possible. Just you know, maintain whatever you're doing, stay patient, and just um, be confident in yourself and know that you're here for a reason. You're on this team for a reason or whatever. Mm -hmm. I yeah. love it. Yeah, and we also, <coughs> I don't, I did this with an, inter like, an interview the other day, but they were like, oh, so you guys do basketball while you're still doing competition while you're still doing community work mm -hmm. while you're still mm -hmm. in yeah, school. Yeah. So I yes. think um, a lot of people don't know, obviously basketball is in its like prime right now. So right. We're still doing basketball games, doing mm -hmm. interviews, um, trying to still make some changes as well to the school. Yeah. Just elevating. Now that you, like you said, we have right. this platform, which yeah. we didn't have last year. We're trying to, last year we were still trying to make people like, oh, we, we are the Tiger Right, girls. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what we are. You're really explaining who you yes. guys were first. Now it's like, yes. now we get to appreciate who we are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So hopefully, I mean, the recruitment now after. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, I can't it imagine. Is crazy. Yeah. It is so, crazy. Yeah. yeah, we're doing a lot of things like that. And like she said, we always do community stuff. But 
games and yeah it's kind of like a multifaceted thing yeah. now well what about the song right so we talked about that and the meaning behind it why did you guys pick that song what type of meaning does it have and then it, and then like let's talk about how this is actually impacting people now on tiktok even like all right. the stuff that's happening yeah uh okay (laughs) um when we first had like our very first practice with our choreographers they played the song for us um which they always do they always show us our song and what we'll be competing to so when they played this song um again Kalia had said this earlier but usually we dance to like a couple different songs it's not it'll never be one song so when they played it we were kind of like waiting um for like (laughs) like, what's next okay and we're like oh wait that's it yeah (laughs) so we all were really really nervous because it was one song and then just the meaning overall it's like like a boy and and then when we're when we're learning the dance like we're doing masculine um you know type of moves so we were nervous but the nerves really went out the door because again one thing about our team we push ourselves to the max so I think like I had said it Kalia said Mm -hmm. it because she is a captain but we were just constantly telling each other you have to do it like you cannot fake it the moves have to look genuine because if you fake it the crowd will tell and it will not read it will not you know be able to show like what we're really trying to say with our moves because again we can't really say you know too much so our dancing will always speak for itself so we're just glad that it was able to speak and people are able to put their own thing to it and you know we're just like kind of hyping it up like yeah 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 yeah. yes (laughs) yes yes yeah and it kind of meant um a couple different things I think um we just in the past, like we said, the past year kind of fit in perfectly right. just because we were pushing the boundaries of what women in sports looks like. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just doesn't – It, I love basketball. I love all of those things, but it doesn't just always look like that. Right, um, right. It looks like us. It looks like a bunch of different people. So I think we were trying to push that boundary of what women in sports does look like. Mm-hmm. So using a song like that and, like she said, using all these, like, masculine little hints in there, mm-hmm. um, I think push the boundary. And even on – TikTok, I saw someone, they were like, oh my goodness, I just quit my job or something like that. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Empowerment. Yeah. So it definitely had a lot to do with that. And then also in like the hip hop category, um, you always have, you have a lot of men in there Mm -hmm. as well, just in like the world in general. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. um, not like actually dance is like heavily influenced by women, but in the hip hop category, a lot of men are in there as well. Mm -hmm. So we were just saying like a group of girls from, LSU can come in and yes. do it like a boy yeah. too. Yeah. So. Well, I thought it was hella dope because we're watching it. And like you said, I'm watching this video and I'm like, dude, like you said, these are masculine moves almost yeah. like, you know, and it was the way you guys pulled them off. And to me, I mean, you guys see my shop, like I love art, right. And love storytelling. It, yeah. So you guys are telling like the girls kind of briefed me a little bit of like the backstory and stuff. And then I watched the video and I could feel it. And I bet mm-hmm. you that's what everybody felt there. You know, the energy that shit don't lie. Like yeah. Yeah. you guys are <laughs> making that shit happen with your, mm-hmm. your, you're, it's art that's that, and yeah. it's telling a story and I was just sitting there I was like I can feel this shit like yeah. and that's like I think that's the dopest thing about whether it's dance or a canvas piece mm-hmm. or a vinyl piece or whatever right yes. um the artist's expression of it and what it means and that's why I like right. I'm like I just want to have you guys on the podcast and just tell your story and stuff because <laughs> it's super dope and I think what you guys are doing is so innovating and, and so good for the world so good for humanity and that's why I like with my platform whether it's a podcast my shop mm-hmm. I want to give you guys the chance to talk about it tell about it you know and just share your story so yeah and that's what we were kind of talking about too is because everyone is asking us like what does it mean what does it mean right. like they want to know a <laughs> clear answer but yeah. I was talking to Sanai too and I was like the great part about this whole thing is it it means so many different things and yes. so many different exactly people. so yeah. like like she said the dancing speaks for itself but then also everyone takes something different from it like you took mm-hmm. something yep. and we're also taking something from that mm-hmm. routine so yes. I think that's cool as well I think that's good art right when mm-hmm. you can make yes. somebody think and make it mean a billion different things or yeah. however you want to take it that's true art and like yeah. that's beautiful so but one one last I got to ask this question though because okay. this is like true art How, where the hell did the hats come from <laughs> we was they had to stop the video yeah. for me they had to stop it and be like they put hats on I'm like no they didn't and they're like yeah look they have hats on right now I'm like oh shit so I saw yeah. some girls pulled it from their pants right maybe yes. or whatever yes yeah um, so our choreographer, she has a mother, and her name is Terry Rowe. We love okay. her. She's mm. like our fairy godmother. But yeah. she always, <laughs> yeah, she always comes in kind of closer towards um, when we were going to nationals to come help us clean and everything. So before she came in, our choreographers were there, and they were like, we want you guys to wear hats because they saw a hat on one of us, and they're like, mm. yeah, that's really cute, but we want y'all to put it on, like, 
kind of towards the end of the dance, and we were just all looking at them like, we're like where is this coming? Yeah. Yeah. No you guys are gonna toss us the hats? Yeah. They coming like, from the crowd? <laughs> right. We don't know how we're gonna put them on. So Terry came in, um, and she was like, "Okay, I have an idea." She gave us like two pairs of socks, and what they did was we put the first sock on, and I think it was on their left foot, but mm-hmm. I put mine on the right. But we put our socks on, and it's the first sock, and then the second socks. You cut a hole in it, and you put you slip. The, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you put the hat in, but you have to put the hat in in like a certain way. So we would make sure like the hat was in like a certain way. Can you imagine and that? And then yeah. you grab the lid of it and you just like kind of pull it out and then put it on your head. But yes. Yeah. And that yes. was like three weeks before we left. That's what I'm saying. How does nobody yeah. mess that up? Like it's oh, so choreographed. Oh like if backstage, we we're practice, like, no matter what happens, no ma- you pull yes. the hat. That's no all matter we kept what. Saying. Like if the hat doesn't come on, it's fine. Leave even on that floor, yeah. finish the dance. Like, because I think we were, gonna we were get those so hats freaked on. out. <laughs> yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. yes, we were so freaked out about that part. And, you know. I'm freaked out sitting here right yeah. now. I'm yes. like, I have anxiety. I'm yeah. like, God oh, damn, I wasn't even gosh. there. Yeah. Yes, and then when that part is coming, we're like screaming at each other. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and once it's on, and we, we kind of all knew like the hat was on because the crowd was going wild. So yeah. We're like, whew, mm-hmm. thank we the Lord. It, yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Can you guys kind of tell if somebody does mess up? Like if there's a kink in the armor, like, you know, down the chain? Mm-hmm. I c- yeah, yes, we I have, kind of we always talk about on our team, um, like the communication piece mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. we're on stage. Mm-hmm. So we like to always like talk. I don't know. You can't really tell from the video, but we're mostly talking the entire time. Like, yes. really? hey, go, no, like if you're off a little, no, to the right, clear yeah. this, like uh-huh. whatever. What? Um, yes. So cool. when something happens, usually we're really good about like next play, mm-hmm. um, but sometimes just in practice, you're like, oh, gosh. Yes. And then, you know, you have to do it again. <laughs> but yeah. you can definitely tell in the energy of, like, the team what's kind of going on, even though you're doing it yourself. So yes. That's wild, bro. I, that's <laughs> unbelievable to me that nobody messed up one little thing. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's God. We Thank you. So for, real, for real. That's, like, that's, yeah. that's <laughs> wild. Yes. So at practice, you guys do mess up? Like, that's, like, oh, mm-hmm. I mean, Lots obviously, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to. <laughs> But yes. That's so crazy. It just blows my mind that the final product is so perfect and so choreographed like that, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. to a T and on sync. It's in sync. It's nuts. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm so glad it did. I mean, our coach, we have to give it to her a lot mm-hmm. because she's really the main one, you know, that sticks it out for us and just stays after hours, making sure to clean us and making sure like the final product is that product and whatever we give on semis, you know, that's what it is. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For finals, you just have to do it better. So we're just so glad we did good that day so that for finals, we could just do it better with our performance and, you know, just not getting so excited and just sitting in the pocket, sitting in our dance and just believing that we could do it. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of practice. Yeah, I can't imagine. (laughs) I can't imagine. Well, I respect you guys so much. And and really, thank you guys so much, Kalia and Nizzy. Thank you. This was awesome. I feel like I could talk to you guys for hours. And I want to ask you guys a million (laughs) questions. I want to stay. I know. All right. So (laughs) let everybody know where you guys are at at social, at least, so they can follow you. Mm -hmm. So give them your social media and all that stuff. You go first. You guys know yours? (laughs) (laughs) Not your (laughs) fence, though. Um, okay, so my Instagram it is it is Nizzy Nye N I Z Z Y and then N A I I. My Twitter is the same thing. I want to say or no, it's like Sanai, but that that's fine. We'll Just put it in the show notes. We'll put it in the show notes for you guys. <laughs> yeah. And then my Instagram's Kalia Kohler C A L I E A K O E H L E R. Just yes. my name. Nice. Yeah. Yes. That's really what I use. So. We'll put it in the show notes that way everybody yeah. can click on them. It'll be a lot <laughs> yes. easier that way. Yeah. yeah. But thank you guys so much for the time. This was awesome. Thank you. And, and shit, maybe we'll do it again in a couple yes. months after there's some more newspaper articles, all this shit that you guys <laughs> yes. are doing. So. Thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, no, thank you guys. Fun. Thank yeah. you. <laughs>